Hi, I'm Jane and welcome to another lesson of my workshop with Strathmore. Throughout this series we are filling a watercolor sketchbook together and today we will explore and experiment around some animal motifs. Before we get started with the lesson, I'd like to introduce you to the materials. The goal of this lesson is to experiment, so I'm going to be using a little bit more supplies just to see what is possible and to explore different techniques. So for sketching, I have Lyra Rembrandt Art Design Pencil in 2B and a kneaded eraser, which I really like to use on a watercolor paper. Watercolor pencils, also Rembrandt Aquarelle. This is in a shade uh, purple and blue. That is because sketching with watercolor pencils the sketch will dissolve a little bit so sometimes I prefer that from a regular graphite pencil. To create some effects we're gonna be using kitchen salt so you can get that ready as well. Here's some white gouache to add highlights and to do some stylization. This is my Mary gouache in titanium white. A spray bottle is a must and I'm gonna be using a special art supply to create some golden effects that are a bit more different than when you draw with golden watercolor. This this is gold finger in green gold and it's a really interesting material to use. Studio set of 48 pen watercolors. This is Aquafine. For the final demo of this lesson we're going to be using my Mary Blue tube watercolors in these five shades that I'm going to showcase during the lesson. There's also going to be a wider variety of brushes. You can find something similar. Some of these are just optional but you should have something to draw details with. So this is Princeton Heritage number Number two round brush with a stiffer end and it really helps me out with embellishments as well as drawing details. Round brush, a Princeton Velvet Touch number six. This is mid-sized, it is a little bit snappier but also holds a lot of water so this is pretty good brush to work most of your painting with. Then I have two special brushes, these are Aqua Elite which are stiffer. I use it for a specific purpose, this is stroke. What I use it for is a scrubbing of the paint and removing the paint to create some additional highlights. The shape of the brush is also very helpful in doing this. Then uh, from Aqua Elite number four fan is also very helpful like in incredibly helpful. I'm going to show you during the lesson. I use it for animal fur, hair and whiskers. It's very helpful and fun to use. The rest of the brushes are Princeton Neptune, which are my favorite brushes. They are very soft. They're very gentle to the watercolor paper. This is my favorite decker brush. Really use it a lot in the painting. I would say this is the most frequently used brush. Then there is Oval Wash by Princeton Neptune. This one is very helpful for adding backgrounds, filling larger areas very quickly and basically for the same reason I have square wash Princeton Neptune and there's gonna be one more type of paint that I'm gonna work with and that is Aquafine watercolor ink in ultramarine pink these ones are really fun to work with especially in your sketchbook I like to explore different mediums and combine them watercolor inks they're very similar to work with like uh, with watercolors but they don't quite have that matte finish they are more on a shinier side when they dry so try to to explore this in the following demos and let's get started with the lesson for our first demo i want to show you something very simple yet fun and so let's sketch some simplified animal silhouettes i don't have a particular reference just trying to remember how i drew this in the past and drawing from memory helps me to simplify the silhouettes even more You can sketch any kind of animal or insect that you like. I'm sketching with watercolor pencils instead of regular graphite pencil and the silhouette of the animals will dissolve then when applying watercolor paint. Usually when I do this I use the shade of the pencil that's similar to the watercolor shade that I'll be using. I'll be working with a studio set of 48 pen watercolors, therefore I'll be mixing different colors randomly, but mostly they will be shades of blue, purple, green and black. I want to create a mythical galaxy-like animal silhouette, that kind of fun design. I will slowly fill the silhouettes with watercolor and try to use enough water so that the colors inside can mingle. It is crucial to keep all the paint inside the silhouette, don't let the paint escape. 
You can use smaller brushes if you want to fit the paint into the silhouette better, but I always like to go for larger brushes when painting larger areas first. Once I paint the silhouette, I sprinkle some salt and let the paint dry naturally. Salt, it needs enough water to dissolve, but please remove large pools of water rather than let them sit there because these take ages to dry. Here I'm taking an opportunity to play around with color. I'm adding blues and even greens into the originally planned color scheme. Sometimes these experiments pay off and then inform my future works and other times it just looks weird and I don't want to reproduce that anymore. But until I try and see, there is no knowing. Use the same principle to fill in all the silhouettes. Don't be afraid to even sketch and paint in the middle part of the sketchbook where the pages break apart. Add sprinkles of salt as you go. Now it is time to let this properly dry before we can continue with the next step. For the next part, make sure that the sketchbook page is dry and remove the table salt. I will be using my Mary Gouache in titanium white and small brush to draw in some galaxy patterns, dots and lines. If you want to, you can be more scientific about this and Google the actual shape of constellations, but I'm just making up these shapes here. When you embellish all the silhouettes, you can add one more effect if you wish, and that's the golden imitation watercolor in a pen. It is part of the studio set of 48 colors that I have here. I'm drawing these tiny stars and moons to the animal silhouettes as the last embellishment. And we are done with the first demo. Here they are, our mythical animal silhouettes. So I think this was fun and a great way to explore what is possible with watercolor. And in the next demo, I want to show you yet another way of stylizing an animal motif with lots more color. First, let's sketch this little baby elephant and you will find reference photo in the instructions sheet that comes with a video lesson. I'm sketching with regular graphite pencil this time and correcting the initial shape with kneaded eraser. I won't even name the colors for this one because I think I used the entire set just randomly adding color after color into the silhouette, but there are just some colors that I wanted to stand out a little bit more, for example, orange and turquoise. So the idea is to fill the silhouette in a similar way than in the previous demo, but when you want brighter colors to stay bright in such a wild wash of paint, you just have to place colors next to each other instead of trying to insert light colors inside the dark ones. That would be a sure way to create mud on your page. So be careful. Not that it always works perfectly for me, but I generally try to go in with light colors first and only then add the dark colors. I found a silver imitation watercolor in my studio set, so I'm adding that into the wash wet in wet. I'm adding a few colorful splatters both inside this wet wash and outside to indicate that this elephant is made of a splash of color. I also wanted to add a few more bright orange pops of color. Now, the fun part is to create splashes that come out of his trunk and for this I need to add these pools of different paint to the page and make it very, very watery. Now try blowing these pools into each other, preferably in a direction going out of the trunk towards the left corner of the page. This creates a really great looking effect. I sometimes try to connect these with clean water even more and add more saturated color, but don't push the color around too much, let it settle down and create its own transitions. When this first layer dries, we can then focus on adding some realism and create shading and details to the little elephant and so that the piece can come together. I'll start by removing pigment and bringing in the highlights. This is the quickest and most effective way to create some depth. I'm using Aqua Elite stiffer brushes. The stroke brush is especially useful. 
Not only this helps me to make the head look round, but also draw in these light folds of the ears. I suggest that you dry everything again after you are done removing the pigment because paper remains a little irritated and damp after this and we want to add more paint now to create shading. This is better on a completely dry paper. I'm using a mixture of green and paints gray to add shading around the head and draw in folds of the ears. In many areas here you have to diffuse the edge of the shadow to create seamless transition between the new dark and the previous layer. Soft dagger brush or a round brush is great for this. Last shadows go to the bottom side of the trunk and that ear behind the trunk. Head will stay relatively light in comparison so that it pops a bit more. We can now dry everything. Lastly, grab a tiny brush so that we can draw in some details. Most important are eyes and here I'm using darker purple color. Please keep in mind that we aren't really trying for something too rendered here. It's just a suggestion of the eyes and the folds that cover them as well as some texture of the trunk. That's gonna be enough detail. You can add white highlights to the eyes with white gouache. This is the point where I really started to experiment and grabbed watercolor pencils and started to draw in more folds and textures of the skin just to see if that's going to enrich the little illustration. And for the most part I liked it so I kept it. But it still looked a bit unfinished so I tried this trick to add colorful bubbles. I prepared some watercolors on my palette, dipped a small bowl into it and made a stamp on the page. You can go for as many bubbles as you wish and then you can grab a soft brush with clean water on it and try to wet the inside of that circle. The idea is to let the wet color from the imprint bleed into the circle, which creates an illusion of a bubble. I always add more color into the bubbles and embellish the design with more splatters. Then let it dry and enjoy our finished second demo piece. I love what I prepared for a third demo here. It is a portrait of a lion and it ended up being again a bit of a mythical portrait embellished with gold just because that is what I like in these little animal illustration designs. So I hope that you will like it too. First, we'll create a loose sketch. This is a portrait, so we need to keep in mind some symmetry of the face, but there are a few areas that can easily be represented with a simple geometric shape. Make sure that you always start from large shapes and on top of them, you can add smaller ones. When I position the main features of the face, I go over the important lines again with 2B pencil and make these lines darker. I use kneaded eraser to lighten my sketch and get rid of extra construction lines and then build on top of that a cleaner drawing. The drawing doesn't have to be 100% accurate, just do your best. By the way, my sketch is included in the instructions sheet that goes with the lesson and you can trace it if you like. Let me now introduce the colors that we'll use in this portrait. I have my Mary blue in tubes here, in golden yellow, raw umber, Van Dyke brown, Porter's pink, paints gray, ultramarine deep, and I'll also be using the ultramarine pink that is watercolor ink by Daler Rowney. I want the colors to mingle a lot for our first layer, so I will pre-wet the entire page and then start inserting the colors the lion itself is brown, but I wanted to use more variety. So besides the raw umber and Van Dyke brown, I added Porter's pink. This added granulation to the wash and also made the earth tones a bit warmer, which I absolutely love. I will be sprinkling table salt to the wash all the time and every time that I add a new color or darker version of a color, I will need to add a few more sprinkles because salt needs to be added as soon as it gets, otherwise the effect might not work and I'd like the salt to support the furry look of the lion. Let's add yellow and ultramarine pink to the background. I do not like to separate background from the figure in this kind of portrait, but rather blend the colors during the very first wash and you'll see the effect that we will achieve later on. 
Here I'm starting to slowly add dark paint. This is a mixture of Van Dyke Brown and Paints Gray, but I only add it to areas that have to be darker to make the lion head readable. I'm observing the reference photo as I paint, trying to scan for larger dark areas. I'm adding Paints Gray and Ultramarine Deep to the background area, but still working wet in wet. The bottom of the painting, all my colors are more dissolved and transparent, while around the top left corner, they are very dark and heavy. I let this dry and salt effect turned out quite nicely here. In the next step, I'll be removing and lifting some pigment off with Aqua Elite Stroke Brush like we did in the previous elephant painting. It is the same principle to try and shape the head a little bit. When you squint your eyes a little bit now while looking at the lion, you can see it come alive slowly. In the next step, we will add some shading with these earth tones. I am here coloring the iris with light brown and then adding darker pigment to the top of the circular shape of the eyes. We then need to separate the head from the neck part and that is best done by applying shadows underneath the mouth area. Shading is basically just adding tone to your painting according to how you see it distributed on the reference photo. You constantly need and try to evaluate the tones in your sketch with those on the photo. But let me remind you again that we are not rendering these to some high level detail, just trying to get the point across and for this you can just assign the tonal values roughly. Here I'm taking advantage of the beautifully sharp Aqua Elite brush and drawing dark parts of the eyes with paints gray color. To have even more control, you can use number two heritage brush to draw in tiny details of the eyes. Eyes are the most important part of every portrait and so I tend to spend some extra time here. I'm making sure that I dry everything every once in a while and continue building delicate details and shading around the mouth and the nose of the lion. When the portrait dries, I often discover that my shading is still a little bit too light and that I need more contrast. You can always add more color on the top in your next layer until you are satisfied with the contrast. While drawing bits of the hair, I'm taking advantage of my soft dagger brush and using dry brush technique here and there. In this next step, we're going to add the darkest parts of the background. I'm also trying to negatively cut out the silhouette of the line from the background. I'm using a spray bottle to diffuse some edges and this helps me to merge the color with the previous layers. Left side of the portrait needs darkening so I'm adding the mixture there and then softening the edges to blend it in and let's dry again. Few more brush strokes to the bottom of the painting. What I'm trying to do here is to add more blue and separate the lighter parts of the fur from the background. I'm also adding a few more brown brush strokes, but I'm not sure if that was needed. This next part is totally experimental and the goal is to try find balance between colors and tonal values. I added a bit more ultramarine pink watercolor ink on top because I felt that I lost that color completely underneath all the browns and the blues. Let's put this fan brush into good use and I figured it will be awesome for the whiskers part. Didn't disappoint because I created this detail in just a few brush strokes, but I recommend you practice a bit before going in the actual painting. It can be handy for adding more hair to the piece. I had to get used to it at first, but it is very efficient once that you have some experience with it and I love the details that it helped me create. Let's add some highlights now with my Mary Gouache in Titanium White. We've done this before and tiny round brush is the most suitable for this. Reflections in the eyes will make the portrait look much more alive. 
Here I'm also drawing in the lightest parts of the whiskers and some hair, as this is the quickest and most efficient way to get this effect. So you can leave the portrait like it is because it's lovely and basically finished, but if you want to stylize further, this is how I've done it. I was searching for a round object proper size and then traced a circle to the sketch. Then I used golden watercolor from a pen to embellish the circle and draw a sun symbol close to the top of the lion's head. Lion symbolizes the sun, so this is the association that I get with this animal. By the way, I can't believe how opaque this pen golden watercolor got. I didn't have problems at all to cover up the dark background. For the embellishment at the bottom, I used gold finger green gold paste and this one is not water soluble. So I used a spatula to create these falling gold effects. It is recommended that this dries for 12 hours or you can even smudge this gold with your finger for a different kind of effect. Removing the tape now and I can now enjoy the beautiful lion portrait. I sincerely hope that you enjoyed today's examples and go create some more with these techniques. I can't wait to see them. By the way, in the following lesson, I will share with you more examples and this time on stylized portraits. So I'll see you there.